Good morning everybody. This is Dr. Pradeep Srinivasan from the REFER series. REFER stands for Radiology Education for Enhancement of Radiologists. In this video, we will look at classification of posterior cranial fossa and cerebellar anomalies in fetuses. So, when we have a suspicion of malformation of the posterior fossa, the first question to be asked is, is the cisterna magna normal or enlarged? In the mid trimester, up to 10 mm diameter is considered normal, more than 10 mm is considered abnormal. So, if there is a normal cisterna magna and other findings, we may be dealing with cerebellar hypoplasia, rhombencephalosynapsis and vermian agenesis. If the cisterna magna is enlarged, then ask the next question. Is there an abnormal communication between fourth ventricle and cisterna magna? If there is no abnormal communication, then we may be dealing with mega cisterna magna. If there is a communication between fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna which is dilated, then we are dealing with dandy walker complex. In dandy walker complex, we have Blake's pouch cyst, vermian hypoplasia and dandy walker malformation. In Blake's pouch cyst, the vermis, its fastigium and the tentorium are normal. In vermian hypoplasia, the vermis and its fastigium are abnormal and the tentorium is normal. In dandy walker malformation, the vermis, its fastigium are abnormal, there is elevation of vermis and elevation of tentorium and that is dandy walker malformation. So, I have described this with the help of this tabular column. To make things much clearer, I will take you through each example with the use of line diagrams in color. Now, here we have a normal anatomy in mid sagittal view and in axial view. The pons brainstem are in green, the vermis is in brown, the fourth ventricle is in yellow. The tentorium is in blue, the clivus and the occipital bone are in black. So, now here we have a non dilated cisterna magna. There is no communication between the fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna abnormally. The vermis, fastigium, and torcular are normal. So, this is how a mid sagittal view and an axial view would look like in a fetus whose posterior fossa is normal. Now, we have a dilated cisterna magna. Look at the diameter of the fluid space posterior to the cerebellum. It is more than 10 mm. But there is no communication between the yellow fourth ventricle and the dilated cisterna magna. The vermis, fastigium and tentorium are normal. So, this is mega cisterna magna. Now, again we have a dilated cisterna magna, but there is an abnormal communication between the yellow fourth ventricle and the dilated cisterna magna. However, the vermis, fastigium, tentorium are normal. So, this is a Blake's pouch cyst both in mid sagittal and axial view. Now, again we have a dilated cisterna magna. But there is an abnormal communication between the fourth ventricle and cisterna magna. Now, look at the vermis. It is abnormally small, the fastigium is shallow, and the torcular is normal. So, this qualifies for vermian hypoplasia. So, here if you look at brainstem vermian angle, it is increased, whereas brainstem tentorial angle is normal. Now, we have a dilated cisterna magna, an abnormal communication between fourth ventricle and cisterna magna, but the vermis is abnormal, fastigium is abnormal, the vermis is severely rotated posterior superiorly, 
the brainstem vermian angle is severely increased and note the brainstem tentorial angle is also increased the tentorium is elevated this is dandy walker malformation now we come to the other subset there is no dilated cisterna magna but look at the cerebellum the vermis is not seen the foliae are communicating across the midline this is rhombencephalo synapsis now again the cisterna magna is not dilated the vermis is normal but cerebellum is small this could be cerebellar hypoplasia pontine hypoplasia or cerebellar destruction now when the cisterna magna is not dilated the vermis is normal brainstem is normal but however due to an extra structure in black which is causing extrinsic pressure effect on cerebellum on vermis then it is a arachnoid cyst thank you for your patient listening this is from the refer series which is radiology education for enhancement of radiologists i have multiple courses on fetal imaging especially a certificate course on fetal echo certificate course on fetal aneuploidy and a certificate course on anal sonography in adults if students and radiologists are willing to take these courses learn the subject take an exam and qualify for the certificate you can contact me at my cell number 9844129465 or look up refer.medinet.org thank you very much dr pradeep srinivasan happy learning jai hind